It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Moriah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the latest with me, Nima Akasha Ziberi. How you doing? I'm fine. Ah, so thank God for life. Well, it was a reflective weekend for me. Yeah. So the first day of Zuli Eid was yesterday. That's it. Well, I just started. For those that are on the edge, the the whole process, the rituals, everything in Mecca has started. But we are told we'll be <coughs> fasting. So this year. For the first time since my father has passed, yeah, I've been father. maintaining the tradition of fasting <laughs> the first 10 days of Zulu age, okay. which I started yesterday because I never really bothered growing up. I just thought, that will do it. I will pray for us. And even though the rituals were, I've, I've inherited some books I'm reading now, so I won't just want to You're be studying good. it more. No, I'm, no, I know them. I want to be deliberate about doing them now. Oh, Not okay. just the day of Arafa, but the entire 10 days. But then the sad news of um, Sounds of Times passing yesterday, that sort of got me into major reflections. This is one artist I really wanted to meet. And for the eight years on the show, that was the only artist I was looking forward to meeting. No, he came on the but show. Been, you you were on the there. show. Oh. Oh. So yes, I was like, ah, you see. Some things are just destined never to be. So I'm oh. grateful to God for the kind of life he lived. Mm. He's a family man. And he thought all the comments were positive about it. Nobody, everybody was really, really saddened by his passing yesterday. And I think that's a great... Legacy. Thing for anybody, yeah. I wish the wife and children forgive you. Yeah. How are you doing, Tokwe? I'm good. Um, yeah, I like a neck, neck piece. Yeah, Winger asked me. Um, I, I spent Saturday at a wealth summit. You know, sometimes somebody took a yab does a bit during the program. Uh, Dr. Louis Demano said that I've some of some at a point in his life he was doing. Um, wealth-related programs. And he was seeing the same faces over. When he go and speaks, he will see the same face over. That is, Boji, are you not using what you got last year or two <laughs> years ago? Why are you still at this space? Um, and my, mm. and for me, there were two ways to take that information. You don't lose weight by dieting once a week. You need to immerse yourself in the knowledge of where you want to be. So don't get tired of learning. Don't get tired of attending programs. Don't get tired of taking notes. You might feel like they are repeating the same thing you read in one book one year ago. Listen over and over again. Faith comes by hearing. And when you continue to hear, at a point, you'll just be able to execute on it. So I had an amazing time. I think we need to bring Honorable um, Akin Alabi on the show. I've read his book. My children have read his book. He's an amazing speaker. He leads the experience of an entrepreneur in Nigeria. And now he's into politics. And I feel that... Those are the people we need at the, at, within that space. I'm, I'm not like to interview him. No, Aki Alabi is um, the honorable representing, the founder of Naira Bet, honorable representing in Badon for C20. Bring him now. You know him I, I don't know him, actually. Really? I'm, I've, I've been marketing his books since forever. Anybody that said they want to do business, I say, go and read Small Business, Big Money. Read it, understand the Nigerian context of business and all of mm, that. But that's nice. It's good. I'd like to have him on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, are <laughs> Our hair, at, at, the creator weekend. is going to be happy for... The creator. Yeah, the creator. <laughs> at the end, are the creators. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. So uh, we've resumed church officially now. Yay! So every Sunday, we're going to be going to church third now. wave came. That's you know, because I'm, I'm just resuming now. <laughs> I am covered by the blood of Christ. Amen. <laughs> so I've resumed. We had a good time uh, attending a new church very close to us. It was a wonderful service. I've wow. really missed that sort of presence. Mm. Yeah, I felt really, I felt rejuvenated. Mm. And afterwards, we just um, went for lunch. And um, I'm, I'm trying to set up a tradition where on Sundays after service, we we'll go, go lunch. for lunch. Mm. And Oga was like, where don't know? Who forget? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, we'll, we'll sort it. It doesn't have to be a very expensive place. But let's just have that time together since Bond. during the week everybody's busy. So that mm -hmm. weekend, let's... And I'm trying to reduce all the work that I do my weekends so that I can be home. If I have to leave my house, the pay has to be good for mm -hmm. weekends. Mm -hmm. I do my work and my stress weekdays. Yeah. Weekends is for my family. Very yeah. important. Right. How are you doing? You popping. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, You're happy fun. Uh, it was not also bad. I mean, I got to it. <laughs> Was uh, Auntie Betty Rabo invited me over and I went there. It was fun. It was nice to meet a lot of nice people. I mean, it's good. You had your picture well, with Mo. How was it? Yes, I, you, you, if you know what I did there, you just flogged me. She actually did a recording with me. She's like, oh, Mariah, and I see I didn't press record. Eh? You know, I lost it. I lost it. Yeah. I just said, you know, let me just take a picture and just go away because... Oh, uh, you don't know that one. <laughs> no, how can you get... <laughs> you, you don't get a second yeah. jam. Just do it and get the heck out of my 
you don't believe us. So I lost it. Fast. I'll go another one. If yeah. I had possible, you know, it was, it was just fun being around people. And just there, you know, I comforted myself. I did over there, I just minded my business. Learning from the I mean, I love the fact that, that I was there you know, with lots of people. It's quite better about Ruth Austin there. Yeah, we saw the um, picture. Uh, Tara, Tara was there. Yeah. It was just fun just hanging out. She wanted us to talk about being intentional, about being a woman, mm. what you do. And she gave, gave everybody the mic. Oh, she wow. said everybody got the mic to say something about themselves, which was That's great. Cool. So it was fun. I enjoyed it, but I was going to say something. Ah, you guys, I, I was with my banter. Oh, sorry. I was going to talk about something else, but um, yeah. You, you were already leaving when yeah. I reminded you for your yeah. banter. Yeah, yes, you I remember. remember the road, the road. Nima, hmm. roads. They told so, me, oh, fol- I got a road. Why is uh, ranting on Nima? Wait, let me do my own first. I got a message from? from somebody. It says, Agado, Okpailu, Oluwo, Itoki. Ijoko Road hmm. is in deplorable state. Ijoko, I know Ijoko. They also sent me some clips. The communities are joining hands to cry out and asking for help from the government of Ogun State mm-hmm. to please come to their aid. We need lots of road work to be done in Ogun State, and we hope to have in hopefully the, um, the commissioner of works or the governor to come and tell us what's happening. It's it been forever. Yeah, I know it's Joko. I know it's Bado. That's my route. Forever. Ah, it's been forever. I pity the government like that. Forever. Okay, this let's go on a quick break. When we come back, roads. we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, let's start with the punch. Before we even go to punch, all the papers have this uh, information blackout. Mm. So we are, it's, uh, it's been loud and clear. Uh, I think it was put together by the um, NUJ, um, NGE, and NPAN concerning the, the um, press council amendment bill that has been debated at the House. So all our papers have this. But let's take other stories and the punch. COVID-19, third wave. States run mm-hmm. out of vaccine. Over 9,000 travelers disappear. Then we have Southwest governors propose six um, regions, demand local government autonomy and resource control. NIA gets $4.87 billion budget to track, intercept, and call messages. All right. Let's stay with the major headline there, BC. Uh, COVID-19, COVID-19, yes. COVID-19, So uh, there's been these uh, strong indications that we are gradually getting into the third wave of COVID-19. And um, Poncha, uh, you know, recorded that uh, the Delta variant of the virus was found last week uh, when most states have even exhausted their vaccines. And um, according to the relief web, the Delta variant has been confirmed to be found in 22 African countries. Uh, it spread... 225% faster than the original virus. They said about 5,600 people uh, have died across Africa as a result of COVID-19 in the first week of July. And, um, you know, it spread to like uh, 92 um, countries already. And um, um, Lagos State is also saying that um, we've only been able to vaccinate 1% of the populace. And the plan was to have like uh, 60% of the populace vaccinated for herd immunity, but it's only 1% so far. Now, the bed occupancy in isolation centers have also increased in the past two weeks. So they are asking that everybody, you know, takes precaution. You have to follow the guidelines. You have to, whether you are vaccinated or not, you need to be very careful because this kills faster than the original virus. Okay, I have two mm-hmm. stories in punch. From, um, so a policeman, UC poli- um, Ugo Chuku, arrested two journalists, one from Punch and the other from Roots TV, uh, Solomon Ooh. Odeni and B- B- Busai Otosun. They went there to Dunamis Church as a follow-up to what happened the previous um, week concerning the um, Revolution Now and Busai Must Go t-shirt. So they went there, and according to them, they also showed the police their ID card. Mm. And that wasn't enough. According to, to the report, the police took the ID card, smashed it and destroyed it, and then listened to them, refused to listen to them and arrested them immediately and took them away and said that um, he was slapped by one of them. And that one pointed his gun at me. He said, I asked what my offense was. I told them that my ID card was enough evidence that I was not part of the protesters. And yet, it all fell on deaf ears. So they thought there were people protesting, um, insisting that it helped release those who were arrested by DSS in the church. And um, they were, they, those journalists were arrested. That's according to that story. Yes. Um, let me take the story of Karen. So... Um, we took the story, we're talking about what happened to Karen. Karen is a 14-year-old second, secondary school student who, was, who, who died due to complications that the school is um, allegedly culpable for. Now, the person championing justice for Karen 
is now saying that the DCP, that's the Deputy Commissioner of Police, and generally saying that his life is being threatened for fighting for justice for wow. Karen. So his name is Lemmy Elegbe. He has filed a formal complaint against the Commissioner or the Deputy Commissioner of Police at the FCT that they are, um, his, his life and his family are being threatened right. because he's trying to bring justice for Karen and um, because he's, um, invest, he's asking for thorough investigation of what happened in the school. The school, I'm trying to get the name of the school. The school is um, Premier <laughs> Academy, Lube. Mm. So because he's investigating what happened in the school and he wants to get details of how that girl died, right. his life is being threatened and he has taken that case to court. All right, wow. let's move on quick now to The Nation, Lagos, COVID-19, third wave here. Mm -hmm. Poll, court can declare winner. What makes leading insurance firms tick? Troops combed Kaduna Forest who abducted airmen and kids. Afeni Ferry Ohane is a back governor on power shift. You see, you have that story? Yes, Afeni Ferry, yes. So, um, Ohane Zendibu as well as Afeni Ferry are backing the uh, governors for their, the communique, the meeting they had where they were talking about ban on open grazing. And they said they are in full support. And so they are demanding that other states uh, you know, pick up and you know, give that law as well so that they can all have it together. They also talked about community policing, the fact that the governors had agreed that power would have to shift to the south this time around. So they are asking for support in that regard. Community policing, the fact that um, everybody needs to be security conscious. Every, they, they just sort of uh, supported everything the governors had you know, discussed that they were pursuing. And Sad news. I have the troop story. Sad news. Uh, the Emir of Kajoru, Alaji Al-Hassan Adamu, mm. and 10 members of this family were abducted um, last weekend. Uh, and and this, um, the, 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 the security operators are trying to comb the forest right now to see if they can find him. And if you recall, about just last week also, we had about 250 children that were kidnapped in that same state, Kaduna. Uh, we're quite worried about the state of affairs in Kaduna. And the Kaduna Police Command, through the divisional police officer, um, they, they received the information and they've all, all hands on deck to come to the forest and see if they can get any trace of the Emir and his family. And the so worry is that the Emir may yeah. not survive because it's actually very old oh, to track those hours. So sad news keep coming from Kaduna State, bordering around security. And we have constitutional provisions for things like this. Mm. If the president does not want to t declare a state of emergency and take control of Kaduna State before it's completely, yeah. we don't well, have a state, well, the House of Assembly of Kaduna State should, should do please something. invoke yeah. the, the we'll section. We'll talk more about it. You know, that's our hot topic today, so okay. we'll, we'll discuss more about it. Yes, yes, to take the call. So, um, based on the clamoring for Niger from Nigerians concerning the, the, um, <clears throat> the, the Senate Committee on INEC and the new bill, the amendment to the bill being proposed, there is information from credible source according to the nation that they would br bring back the electronic transmission of um, results from the bowling units to the collation center. That's one good thing. Another is there is a new bill pushing for co that um, courts shouldn't be able to determine who wins the election. Mm -hmm. What usually happens is whenever they go to court, the court cannot, will now pick the winner. I mean, pick who the governor would be, that that will no longer be the case. That what the court will be doing going forward based on this new amendment is the court will recommend a re-election within six months period so that there'll be a new court of election. Right. Also, they said they wanted to <laughs> mandate every political party to conduct its primary six months before election so that the wrong candidate will not go for election when there is a pre-existing mm. court case yeah. mm. on who, on, on internal tussle from yeah. the party system. Right. So six, um, six months will give enough room for um, okay. courts to we, determine let's who go should go for election. When we come back, we'll continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Stay with us. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Odudua Republic, intimidation, harassment, won't stop <clears throat> agitation, coalition tells federal government. State police will make governors true chief security officers, says Afeni Ferry. And uh, declare state of emergency in schools. Uh, BC, go yes, ahead. Yes, I have the story. So uh, the National Association of Sea Dogs, uh, also known as Pirates uh, Confraternity, are calling on the federal government to declare a state of emergency on insecurity in schools. 
um, the Capone, Abiola Owaje, has said that um, the recent abduction that we had, that's the 121 students of Bethel Baptist uh, School, the 136 students of Saliko Tanko Islamia School, uh, 83 students of a federal government college burning. These are some of the abductions that have been happening, and it seems like the federal government and the state government have failed in protecting the lives of their citizens. And so if they declare a state of emergency, then they can come to they understand the gravity of what has been happening. They can come together and work out modalities. And he also said that um, the Safe School Initiative launched after 2014 Chibo Girls Abduction should be revived and other initiatives that will help even like, revive no, no, they need it to. Um, we have our goods and trucks, inbound trucks from Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and then Togo, in what Nigeria trapped at the Benin Republic border. For whatever reason, Benin Republic government said that they have a business with us. And according to this report the, in the Sun, they wrote to the Nigerian government and they said that they have accelerated it to Abuja, but the Nigerian government has not done anything. The transit goods from those countries in, uh, under ECOWAS are supposed to be uh, tra uh, tra uh, transported free. So they're supposed to transit freely without any charges. But now they've imposed a levy of about 9 million CFA, which will convert to about 6.5 million naira on each truck heading to Nigeria. Mm. So two-way, not two-way thing. Either our government try to, you know, to, to talk, to talk to them, dialogue and see ways out of this, whatever the issues are, maybe they are retaliating because the report says in the retaliation that against our instructions and bother yeah. them. But then the alternative is that we revamp whatever is happening at our MPA at the MPA, at our own borders. We have enough borders for our goods not to pass through any country. We are a border, a shoreline country, whatever, coastal country. We mm -hmm. don't need any small country flexing muscles trying no. to slap our face. No, we need to do not. We do not. We do not. Because it's for cheap, cheaper, cheaper uh, clearing fees. That these people are resorted to products that. that need to but go now, to land. Products, products, about 3,700 trucks. Mm -hmm. Help me now. With goods stuck there under the sun and rain. Some people. are perishing already. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. we can co not continue to do, look at our businessmen suffering this and be, and be in Abuja be waiting, accelerating it. We need to revamp so that people can go to... Uh, but these businessmen uh, will uh, refuse uh, to uh, use the, um, the borders, seaport. Because Remember, our own seaport is, is yeah, clogged road, and the clogged, process is clogged. Tough. Bad so roads and all of that. So, so we can corruption. revamp. We have Port Harcourt. We have places in Nigeria. Uh, but, you know, please, let me take the story of um, housing. You know, as a real estate person, it's a concern for me. But fashion, um, what, what the Minister of Housing just did was to debunk a quote that many, of, many, many real estate people say. Oh, we have a 17 million housing deficit. We have a 22 million housing deficit. What Fashola just told us, Minister Fashola said, that there is no data that backs up that claim. And that he became, a, when he became the Minister of Housing, he heard the same story, oh, 17 million. Then he tried to investigate who, who, who released this figure, who gave us that information, mm -hmm. and found there was nothing to it. Wow. Even um, some people claimed it was World Bank, that he had the country manager of World Bank. Tell them, how did you get this information that Nigeria has a 17 million deficit. or 20, 22 million housing deficit? And there was no claim to back it up. So wow. we don't have the data, but the number so isn't what's the that data? high. Did they give us the data? Yeah, that they are working on getting accurate data of our housing deficit, but it is not as high as 17 million or 22 million. Okay, we do that moving on now to Vanguard, PDP in the Metango over transmission of polls results. Uh, another story I was going to talk about is the NDLEA. Intercept 6.5 billion naira drugs in Lagos hmm. goes after the fleeing baron. Let me take that story. So, uh, 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 an there was a, a raid at a house in Ikota by NDLE. Um, for the, there's a young man, I'm finding his name. His name is, uh, oof, I just lost that. They went to uh, um, his house in Okota and he fled. Obviously, he saw them coming. And what happened was they saw, but they, 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 um, they searched through his house and found um, quite a number of documents to establish his true identity as a drug baron. Mm. And he, they, they are, what they intercepted was 6.5 billion worth of drugs, which he had brought into Nigeria from South Africa. Mm. And obviously, they were going to, um, they were en route somewhere else. But um, it's quite sad because it says they had 4.3 kgs concealed in nine packs of cereals imported from Canada on an Ethiopian airline. Mm. This is a huge... Okay, his name is Onwurolu. Yes, that's his name. Chidi Onwurolu. And he's been declared wanted by the um, NDLA immediately. Hmm. And they've directed all agencies and directors of access to 
Inform Interpol that's somebody we about must his... Um, that's somebody we must find. Yeah, his, uh, his whereabouts. Yes. Senator Ali Dume, the chairman committee on... House committee on... Senate committee on army said that the electronic Sorry. voting and electronic transmission of voting results proposed in the new electoral act will not work up north. He gave a, couple, a, a lot of reasons. He said, number one, there's <coughs> poor electricity and Bono, where he's from, is even a worst case in that area. Also talked about insecurity and taking down of, you know, cyber mass and all of those things that will make it difficult to work. And the PDP went at him, saying mm. that, you know, he's just trying to pull us back and all of that. I personally believe that Alin Dume knows what he's saying. And I think that the restoration of the Northeast plan that was proposed by the last administration has not even scratched the surface. So we know it's not every area. But we can have an arrangement where, like we had when we proposed the... the there was this method, uh, card reader, mm. where it was jointly used along with the uh, 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 registration, whatever, for INEC during one election. So we can have electronic voting in areas where it is okay and secure and it is uh, possible to do and do an alternative right. in areas where mm -hmm. it is not. But let's not wait until right. we have everything in place. Before. Well, I had a quick story yeah. yes, in the um, um, Vanguard. So uh, socio-economic rights and accountability project, Seraph, yes, they asked the Federal High Court in Abuja to order the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission and the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission to review downward the remuneration and allowances of presidents, the president and the vice president, the 36 governors and members of the National Assembly. So they filed this suit on Friday and they've not fixed um, a hearing for the suit yet. And they are saying they did this to, you know, reduce the unfair pay disparity between political office holders and judicial officers. They also asked that uh, a review, an upward review of the judicial uh, officer's salaries need to be done so that mm. at least everybody can be balanced. All right, let's move on to the news direct. 2020 loans, banks, customers clash over hike in interest rates. FG grants license to first indigenous hydropower generating company. Banks' total assets hit 53.17 trillion in April, says CBN. Infrastructure software, others critical for effective digitization electoral system. Dangote Cement acquires 2,000 trucks for distribution of products. Fidelity Bank unveils seven point agenda to outlive competition and COVID 19. More states to introduce stringent protocols over spread of Delta variant. Okay, so this, yes, this Nima. Smart company, my, uh, the Marbon Limited, is a hydropower company, and they've been given license by the federal government to, you know, to resort to water generation of power. According to them, they've employed about 300 youths already, and the federal government is simply saying to them, please use your license exactly for what it was given. Mm. Hopefully, this will help mm. us you know, increase generation. Although we are generating enough power as it is now, but we're not transmitting enough. So mm. I think we should focus now on licensing transmission as well. Welcome. Okay, yes. So, okay. The banks, the, the, the people are having issues with their banks, people that have borrowed money from the banks, so 2020 loans are about to be hiked. Banker customers are clashing over this hike. In 2020, the CBN gave many incentives for during COVID to make it easy for people to get loans to cushion the effects of COVID. And the bank, people that got loans from banks got it at a lower um, single, just about 12% about below. These same loans, because they are variable um, interest loans, in this year, the banks are now increasing the loans. So they got the loans last year, and now they'll be asked to pay more, and they're saying it can't work. The bankers are saying that to fight inflation, they need to increase, that this is not a balanced system. It was done last year because of COVID. Um, borrowers are saying this cannot work for them too because there is exchange rate challenges, listing that exchange rate is a problem, for, um, um, depreciating ability of Nigerians to buy is depreciating. So there are many people already affecting their business. You can't increase loan interest rate on loans for them at this stage. It cannot work. So now, who will help us to navigate <clears throat> Okay, so my, the story in the, that caught my attention in the news direct is Dangote Cement acquires 2,000 trucks. According to them, they invested $150 million to get new trucks, trailers, bulk tankers, tippers, cargo trucks, uh, and they, the, the acquired trucks is to improve the efficiency of effectiveness of Dangote Cement logistic network across the country. And it's also to create about 4,000 jobs for people. We appreciate that. However, this is our, this is our road that 
the Ministry of Works is just trying to put together that these trucks are going to ply, ply on. on yeah. And we, 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 the citizens, we are worried that 2,000 additional trucks, there are some Dagoda trucks on our road right now, that some of them are, um, many, people, many of them have, they have, they have, they have low maintenance issues, and they have to be taken off the roads completely. It, it, so I'm hoping that they are bringing in 2,000. I hope they are removing the ones that in, are dilapidated. In, in defense of um, Dangote, though, just for all the haulage companies, it's our road that spoils the trucks. So if we do the roads, the trucks can last longer. No, we longer. don't want them on the no. roads. We want to have the trains. Train. Should, okay. I, would have, yes. I would have waited. I would have preferred if they had waited for the trains to be ready to and buy many more cars, mm. the, the, the carts, mm. the carts mm. to be on the rails. That one I can celebrate. Mm. But you bringing me 2,000 trucks on this our road that was just yes. doing, I still begging them to fix. Please, though, this is your trucks. Are we done? We to go. Go. We take a story. Yes. Go ahead. So I have a story. Uh, this happened in Edo State. A 78-year-old woman died and was left in her apartment for nine days by her two daughters. The first yeah. daughter is uh, 60 years old, and the second is 58. And according to them, they said that uh, God instructed them not to disclose to the people how their mother died. And so they should leave her inside the house. And so when the police came, in, neighbors, you know, perceived that something yeah. was wrong, broke into the house, and they were still going about their normal duties, even with their mother dead. And the police are taking the woman to uh, the mortuary, and um, they did not arrest the two ladies, but yeah. I would have you know, wanted them to have um, taken them for question evaluation. No, psych evaluation. Mm -hmm. Because we're elderly people, yeah. and for you to say... Well, spiritual yeah, yeah, you're not 60, we so have to I don't run. know. Don't really just act surprised yeah. now. Mm. That is our country. Religious. Once they say, God yeah. said... Mm. Everybody yeah. just... We should no, 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 go. Hey, go to uh, that. Yeah, they should return we have to run. That is all we can take on. You didn't take that story since now. Unfortunately, we run out of time. <laughs> we uh, are going to break when we come out, move on to our hot topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the Chairman Senate Committee on Army, Senator Alain Dume, has said that the clamor in some quarters for the inclusion of electronic voting and transmission of election results electronically in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill for 2023 general elections will not work in another part of the country. Mm -hmm. Specifically, he said the concept is futuristic mm -hmm. but not realistic. Well this is the same senator that also said that local policing is not the right way to go because mm. he believes that every that the, the police we have have no reason not to be able to police the entire um, state, Nigeria. So what are your thoughts on this? You can join the conversation 081-270-53687. You can also call us on 091-390-76948. You can send us messages on YouTube and uh, Facebook. We'd we'll love to read your messages. So um, what are your general thoughts? So his specific um, concern is that there are certain areas within the northern states that have no electricity. And it would be unfair to say voting, electro um, transmitting the results electronically would be the right method in that. Would you agree with him, Nima? I do. I, do. I believe that problems are also local. So the situation, the, or the situation in the north is not the same in Lagos. And it is not the same in Abuja. It is not the same in Meiduguri. It is not the same in major capitals in the north. So you cannot just generalize and say the north. But in Bono, they have a peculiar... They suffered insurgency for so long. They've had their infrastructures destroyed. Some areas, the bridge connecting certain communities have been, you know, blasted off. And they've not been reconstructed. So, yes, you can say we cannot do certain things in Bono or, in, uh, you know, as a, as a state. But you cannot generalize and say the whole of the north. That's why I say that the, sol the solution is not in cancelling every proposed policy. Mm. Because you think it can't work for you. You can't just talk generally like that as a senator. In the, in, in the North, for instance, state policing might not work for them. Mm. But it was the solution to the insurgency in the past. JTF, civilian JTF, yeah. helped yeah. largely in curbing Boko Haram in the recovered areas. And so when he talks like that about state policing as well as electronic voting, what mm. is the blanket? Let me come to you. This, your, your initial thoughts on this. Yeah, okay. So uh, when I heard I was... You know, I was taken aback because I expected that um, every leader, your first responsibility is to find solutions to problems. So exactly. you look around your environment and you see that, okay, uh, this 
um, electronic you know, collection of results will not work. What can we do mm -hmm. to ensure exactly. that uh, we get ready? We find, if he, were, he had opened his mouth to give us um, what is needed, give us options, okay, this exactly may not work here, but if we do this and do that, we may get to a certain level. We may come up a bit, we may meet mm -hmm. you halfway. Then I understand that mm -hmm. you have plans, but you have limitations. And then mm -hmm. everybody can put hands together, put heads together mm -hmm. to work it out. But if you say this one, no, it will not no. work because so, so, and so. That means you don't even have any plans to go further. Yes. Also, at the former Zamfara State Governor and Chieftain, um, Ahmad Yarima, in the papers today, cautioned the, uh, against the fact that some people are working behind to ensure that this electronic collation of results does not work. But if they look into it, it could work. Yeah. And that's how they started when we said, uh, we should have the uh, card registration before people mm. will just write names and you just right. see numbers everywhere. But with that card registration, <coughs> you know, you show that you have to put your thumbprints and then the numbers. Yeah. So, let, let, me, let me hear your initial thoughts mm. on this. Okay, so my initial thoughts, I, it just, there are many. <laughs> the lack of knowledge and research shows in some of our policies and when we hear our leaders talk. And the fact that they are not in the 21st century, they just don't know these things. Because there are places, no matter how remote it is, there are technologies that can be deployed there. Mm. If you throw the US military into that place, they will make phone calls and transmit information. Yeah. So we, we, we can, we must be able to use technology and research okay. that can the university somewhere, somewhere, somewhere tell you how to access the satellites, mm -hmm. which is accessible anywhere in the world. Right. We have satellites pointing everywhere. Right. Can we have deployed um, technology that will be used strictly for this election mm. to convey this thing. Because what we're trying to do is secure the election so that there is no fraud mm. anywhere. It's free and fair. I mean, the way, I mean I, I, as I said, I work for, there's a, I, I do some work for an American um, company that provides educational solutions. Mm. And part of them is that they understand that they have tablets to help teachers. Mm. And they understand there are rural areas mm. that don't have electricity. So they have these devices that can last 10 days. Mm. So you charge it in the city, you take it to the rural areas. And you can use it. For a whole 10 days, so the, the head teacher only has to go to town to charge for the entire week. Mm. So these are things, that, so, so technology provides solutions. Yes. So if we don't have a, a, a cut and dry, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, I'm not moving. Is, are there other ways? that we can ensure that we provide this solution so that for these pretty peculiar areas to ensure that, because the objective so is to have a seamless we, transmission of results. If, if we're relying, we relying strictly on the telecommunication providers, they've already said it, that they cannot guarantee providing network in some remote areas yeah. because they cannot secure the lives of their workers. Mm -hmm. So that one, we can't rely on them. We cannot, they're, they're businessmen. Mm -hmm. But what I, what, what, what I wanted to hear is that we have complained that the election, the election process is still faulty. There are still some gaps. And the, one of the ways to block that gap is to do electronic um, transmission of results. collected results. Mm -hmm. So if you say this is not going to... If you say we, can't, we don't have the resources at the moment, but I would have information on this later. But he's saying mm -hmm. that he's not against it. Let's be clear. He's no, issue is, he's, he's, he's no issue to, for 2023. Mm -hmm. For now, that's what he's saying, so, yes. So in response to that, that you know, networks and all of that, I've already said they can't you know, provide... He said that the most credible way to do elections is what they've done in the past. And he cited examples referring to the time of PDP and all those rigging that happened, saying that the people defended their votes and that if the people can defend their vote, that is the way to go. Maybe yes, Ibono. So we can have ways, solutions that are local to Bono that can I work agree. for them. Mm. But I doubt that, you know, just generating power with generator work. We've seen even in Lagos that some people will enter polling units and carry books. So <laughs> is it generator that I, that I cannot lift? You can lift you know, it. You know, people will come in and lift it. Even if it requires two people to lift it, one person can vex and lift it and say this election will hey, Nima, let, me, so, let, me, okay. let me throw this out there. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me just pick your brain from this because I, I worry... You know, as we are trying to almost rebuild mm -hmm. the nation, nation. Mm -hmm. right? Well, everybody's eyes are open now, and we want to fix. If we want to fix Nigeria, my question is, do we need votes from these rural, rural areas, especially for major uh, positions like the presidency, House of National Assembly? The reason I ask, those communities, the, the, the leaders the that are relevant to them are the local governments, those yeah. who are closest to them, those are the ones they know. Yeah. They don't know who <laughs> Buari is, they don't know who, who Fela Droto is, who is going to be running, they don't know who these big guys are. Mm -hmm. So my question is, do, do we really need the involvement of these totally lower class 
um, Nigerians to be part of the decision making because if we want to fix Nigeria, can we rely on their own understanding <laughs> yeah, of the issues? It's very the sensitive. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it out there. Yeah. Can we rely on their understanding of global international issues, mm. um, infrastructural issues, um, resource control issues to vote properly? Can we rely it on them? Not, it is not their fault. And I know a lot of Medugu. I have a friend in Meduguri who is doing her, her PhD now. So not all of them are not educated or you on the phone. I'm talking about the people in 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 the people talking about the people in the know the electricity that they are sensitive to disenfranchise a person based on what their situation is. Okay. That they are they, they are not as informed mm. as we would love them to be. It's not any fault of theirs, but that of our leaders. It's right. deliberate. Mm. Right. So to now to remove them. Because they would vote un un uninformedly about yeah. what the, the situation is, is still going to be against okay. them. I, 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 I want you to think about it. Let me okay. go. Should be careful. When we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll dig further into that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing Senator Ondome's uh, proposition that the electronic transmission of resources in very rural areas is not realistic at this time because of the poor infrastructure uh, uh, in, in, the, in those communities. And therefore, I asked the question that, okay, if we are really going forward to fix this country and we really want Nigeria to move forward, those guys in those really, really poor neighborhoods really don't know the big, uh, the, 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 the big candidates. They know the local government chairman, mm -hmm. the LCDAs, all the various committees. Those are the ones they know and they should vote for. But do you think that maybe we should start thinking of, for those big tickets, like the governorship, the uh, National Assembly members, we should have it, we, should, we might have to disenfranchise these people who have no knowledge mm. of the real issues at stake. Mm. Because if we want to fix this country, we want people who are real stakeholders mm -hmm. to be part of the voting system. What are, what are your thoughts? Yes, yeah, so um, I agree with you. Uh, because I understand that over the years, if you look at our political landscape, we've had people from those rural areas being used. Yeah. The fact that they, are, they vote without actually being really informed. So it just takes one elder in the community, one emir in the community to say, okay, all of you follow this person. Mm -hmm. Everybody just goes without right. asking the right questions. If the person has the capacity to be a leader, they right. don't have that knowledge. So in that light, we could say, mm, with the way we are going, we want to bring real development. Who are the stakeholders who can ensure mm. that we get it right? I remember that um, in families, when you want to have meetings and everything, it's not everybody that is a member of the family that sticks on the table. There are people who are leaders. There are people who, uh, because of their track record, sit at the table and mm. make decisions that run through. Yeah. So if we want that sort of development in the nation, I think we now start to ask ourselves, who are these stakeholders mm. that can make the right decisions? that mm. will even affect mm. the people in the rural areas. And when you have education, education is one thing that puts you uh, at that pedestal, yes. yes. Because you're already informed, you have the knowledge, you can make better decisions. decisions. So I think we need to start thinking about it. Let me take this call. Education that we Let me take, no, no, it's not faulty. No, 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 it's not faulty. Please take that matter. Okay. So <laughs> then, let's take um, Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Been holding for a while. You have Dr. Lula. Yes, you're live. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Well, I really appreciate where you can come. But the thing I saw in you, this is your obeying nature about Nigeria. And Nima, her own perception about northern Nigeria is that in northern Nigeria is a dead zone. For your own information, northern Nigeria is not a dead zone in terms of education. Very, 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 very good in education. Uh, what you are seeing here is everything has two corners. Everything has two corners. You see this electronic voting you are all talking about. Let me take you the number of I think what we work at, one 2019 election in December. Why, in reality, we hardly won the election. How do you just oppose that one? How do you justify it? You understand, we are very much in a haste 
to modernity without looking at the pros and the cons of the modernity. This issue of electronic voting is subject is open to manipulation. A lot of people read election before the election day. And this is what is the best way. That's why the fact that I disagree with him in many instances. Power belongs to the people. Thank you. People can stand. Thank you very much, Hassan. So we also saw that, that even in the U.S., they were talking about uh, Trump was claiming that some of these numbers were manipulated. Mm. So electronic, ele electronic transmission of the results is not perfect. It might, might not be perfect. So know? thank so you for going to, to the U.S. Because, well, let me just, before, before I um, say my point, um, Hassan mentioned something, and I'm wondering, did Hassan listen to Nima? Because Nima said that the people in Badugiri that well, she knows that are very educated, educated, yeah. well educated and clarified that they were talking about the rural areas. So what I would say is... Trump won the election despite the polls, despite all the educated analysis mm. that Hillary was going to win. Why? He appealed to people who didn't care if he used foul language, mm. who didn't know about the fact that he doesn't pay taxes, who, didn't, who were not analytical mm. about the decisions they were making. They were just like, this person came to meet us. We've been ignored by most, government, most presidents, mm. presidential candidates. But this man came to us, came to canvas yeah. us, made us feel important, we'll vote for him. And the numbers shocked people. Most of Trump's electoral, uh, elect electoral votes came from the rural areas who were largely neglected right from time. Yes. So any president has, ab anybody has ability to reach out to them. It will cost money, but you can go and meet them. The sad challenge with Nigeria is that most of this rural population defer to one godfather. Mm -hmm. And the stakeholders know how to approach the godfather mm -hmm. and stamp like you uh, pledge your loyalty to me and that person said i will deliver you a hundred votes mm. i'll deliver you a thousand votes how can one person deliver a thousand votes it's because they have built influence over exactly, those people yes so that, that's what i want us to fix because we need to cut off that influence such that every citizen should decide i would say if right now you're you're not qualified to vote at this time because of maybe your educational um, level or maybe your exposure. I'm not saying it's going out there. I because know. the truth is that we want to fix the country. Those people who were disenfranchised for many years, there was no godfather mm. talking to them. It was the independence. I'm not aware. I don't know mm. even interested. Mm. But it, it takes time for you to sell that ideology of your party to them. But they now believe in you. So, so my point is that can we begin to look at that in, that, in, the, in this part so, of the world? So Maria, let me take I this call. I'll come to you, mm. Nim. I think Peter has been holding for a while. Peter, are you there? Hello, Peter, you're live. Go ahead, please. Hello, good morning. Morning. Yeah, um, the issue you are discussing, you know, the suggestion that was made by the Senator Ndumi, I think that is absurd. When we talk of technology, it is not just the issue of going, uh, carrying something or carrying generators, there are somebody who was saying. These are machines that we charge, and some of them can last two, three days. Right. Uh, the issue of saying it's not going to work, I think it's a problem. It's, it's not good for uh, the Nigerian political system. Why am I saying so? Um, if we don't implement, especially the electronic transmission of this resource, we know that this is uh, the place, so this is the area where reaching takes place, and the votes of the people don't count. If maybe the vote are to come, we have to at least for at worst ensure electronic transmission of this result right from the polling unit. And all those interferences that we normally have on the way, they will not. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, all these interferences that we normally have that do occur, uh, they will be eliminated and the votes will count. Then there's also a problem that we also have. When it comes to you, hear somebody, they say they are presenting the results, and somebody will tell you, oh, I will deliver 1,000 votes, like one of you rightly pointed. And you are delivering 1,000 votes, do you have 1,000 cards? <laughs> it, it all entails this issue whereby we have monetized yeah. the electoral system. Thank you very much, you Peter. Want... Yes. Let me quickly just do clarity. Like I said, I think um, Hassan doesn't understand when I say problems are local. Mm. So what we call touting here and box uh, mm. the, Ballot box hijacking that is common here it's, might, might be different because of the security issues there. In some areas, they still can't hold elections in the Northeast. 
Some areas presently, I, I even doubt with the I situation in Kaduna, yeah. if they will have successful elections, if the situation persists in Kaduna. Mm -hmm. So we need to take care of each area's problem. Security is a major problem there. Hijacking and all of that example that I gave about, you know, the devices that you want to give as alternative to having this election work can be, will not, can be, can be impeded if yeah. you don't take care of uh, security. Right. And that's why I meant, I didn't ramble. mean that they are not educated. We need to okay. ramble on this. Yes, no, I, was, I, was, yeah, I was going to prefer a solution of, um, I remember when we had, um, uh, I've forgotten his name, the Honorable representing the location within your state. Um, Shinopela? Yes, Shinopela. And he mentioned that there is, there must, we must do voters' awareness, intensive mm. voter ed education. Mm. And it can't be done, uh, he's a bit partisan because he's a politician. It has to be done by civil society. Mm -hmm. Because until we inform people, we cannot, and, and an uninformed person will make a deformed decision. Mm -hmm. So we need to inform people on their rights, we need to inform people on what they deserve. If, 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 if I'm in a rural area and I've never seen power, I will see, you give me bread and I'll think bread is the war because I yeah. only see bread once in a year. But if you give me knowledge as to what I deserve, what my life should be like, what my quality, quality of life I should have, then I can make proper intelligent demands from my politicians. So we must have independent, intelligent um, um, voter awareness education cutting across the cities as well as the rural areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I would like to say that um, one of the reasons um, the government are clamoring for regional uh, development now is that every region would now develop at their pace. Mm -hmm. We are not all mm -hmm. So we should be looking for solutions that are local to each level. Mm -hmm. So now we know the problem of the north. I would like that uh, the governors come together to ask themselves, what can we do mm -hmm. to ensure that we step up Exactly. Nobody's moving. That is the yeah. job of yeah. the yeah. governors. Yeah. Educating your uh, you know, uh, making sure that you, you, uh, your classrooms and all of that are working. Some states mm -hmm. deliberately, as governors watch it, dilapidate. Yeah. And when you miss the development years of such, some children, it will affect it everybody. Policy will continue. We elections. have to run, but you see, if you think about it critically. What technology do you really need to transmit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do the normal manual counting. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have 100 votes here. You insert it in a device in and, you, and it's gone. So it they you, you, no. you, we over... Um, the, the Maybe they need to see if they a laptop or not, something. You don't need anything out of the ordinary mm -hmm. for this. So let's not complicate it. Just unfortunately, the unfortunately, the unfortunately, unfortunately <laughs> that is all we can take on this comments. Please, we'll list, we'll, we can still read your comments. So please send your messages on YouTube. And um, we'd love to really hear your thoughts on this. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, Honorable Yakubu Bade representing Chikun Kajuru Federal Constituency of Kaduna State has called on the federal government to legalize the use of guns as a result of insecurity in the country. According to him, every Nigerian should have a gun just like people have mobile phones so that whenever they are faced with threats, they can <laughs> be able to defend themselves. Now, we have with him Honorable um, Bade with us on the studio. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good, Thank good. Good to have you on the show. We are quite concerned, especially about the Kajuru local government. So much has been happening lately. The Emir were recently kidnapped with um, 10 members of his family. That's where the well, 145 um, pupils of Bethel High School were kidnapped. Um, there's a lot of farmers are scared. Why is your community so attractive to these bandits? What's going on over there? Yes, yeah, I, I, I thank you for this privilege. I think um, what's happening in my constituency is because um, my local government, they have people and certain room, are closest with the town. And um, you agree with me, every development is pushing towards my local government. Mm. Now, what has made it very attractive, I want to think, I want to, I want to, I want to guess, is because of its closeness to town, um, and uh, because we have a lot of arable, farm, uh, arable land, where a lot of people farm, 
the bandits have found this area to be very good abroad for them to hide. So that when they want to strike in the town, they have a close distance or a short distance. And um, with what happened when they kidnapped the area and the Bethel Baptist uh, students, it was easy for them to take away these people because the, the response time between a distress call and the implementation of the security to come is too big, or let me say, let me say, the response time is too, it, 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 it's too long. And uh, the bandits are able to cut away whatever they have to do. Yeah, yeah, Honorable Yakubu Bade. So recently you um, asked the federal government to legalize the use of gun uh, because of the way insecurity is, um, you know, rife in almost every part of the country. Don't you think that is a little bit extreme, knowing the sort of people we are? Yes, uh, uh, challenges like this, when a uh, country is saying we, are, we, we have to take drastic and unpopular decisions. I, I said we should legalize gun maybe because of the frustration I was feeling. When I went to Angwan, India, where they kidnapped nearly 15 people, what they told me was, Oga, if we had guns, those people would have killed them. Because if the entire Angwan, India comes out and everybody has a gun, they will have dispersed those uh, invaders or those bandits. And you see, when people are frustrated, it will just help which is affordable or which is available, what they resort to. Uh, of course, we don't solve a problem by bringing another problem. Even America wants want to have what we call gun control. Before we do that, in Nigeria, legalizing the gun, I believe that it is have to be put in place. We have to make sure that we capture the data of every Nigerian so that if you commit a crime, you will be easily traced through electro electronic mail mm -hmm. or intelligence. Right. But that as it may, if the bandits can freely get gone and they use them illegally, what do you want the helpless Nigerians to do? Right. Okay, go ahead. Mr. What do you want them to do? And they don't get the protection from the security which are paid by the taxpayer's money. Right. Is, it, is the license of gun the only solution? You're from Kaduna State. The, the provisions of the constitution allows that the state is taking over and, you know, peace is restored and then maybe we have uh, the state of emergency then revoked. Why are we not resorting to other, other uh, constitutional solutions rather than, you know, gun running? I, I, I personally don't... Res Support self help. I think I, 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 I've seen I, didn't, jungle I didn't mention God in isolation that that's the only solution we have. Okay. Okay. I only, only mentioned it as one of the ways that people feel they can protect themselves. Okay. Now, that as it may, you agree with me, I'm an advocate of negotiation. But I'm not an advocate of ransom payment, just like my government said. I don't think we should embolden or empower these bandits by giving them money. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong in negotiation. If we can know the leadership, the government is able to reach out to them and know their grievance. It should be a stick and carrot approach. Right. Because anybody who wants to make peace, the government should be able to feel less happy. And if the person doesn't want peace, the government has the mind. Right. I need to, I'm happy that you, re, you restated your stance concerning ransom payment. And sometimes I feel like it is, we're not being sensitive to the plight of citizens that you're representing who had the misfortune, misfortune of being in an insecure, insecure environment, no fault of theirs. We will blame it yeah. on the government's inability to protect them. Mm -hmm. And now they've fallen into the cracks of having their children kidnapped. And the government that did not protect them beforehand is saying that they can go and die, literally, because we've lost about five children mm -hmm. who, were, who were killed 
because the, kid, the, kid, the ransoms were not paid. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, how do you sleep at night knowing that representatives from your area, people you are representing, they're the reason you are getting paid, they're the reason you are working. They are unable to sleep with their eyes closed in their environment. And they are watching you right now. They are waiting to hear what you will say to them. That How are you feeling? That's one. Number two, sir, is it that our intelligence cannot trace money when paid to them? Is it that when you pay the ransom, that money disappears from the face of the earth? Is it not possible to have the codes and have banks and have people trace that money and always find who spent the money? Thank you. Thank you. That's a very intelligent question, especially the last one you asked. Because I've advocated in several forums that except the government is hiding something, or we are not serious, or paying lip service to this matter of insecurity. I give you an instance, which I didn't mention in the press conference I did in the first school of the National Assembly. When Abuja Airport was closed, and people were being freed from uh, Abuja to Katuna or from Katuna to Abuja to catch flights. Did you ever hear a single incident of that they could stop and VIP were kidnapped? Every sensible person will ask that question. Because nothing happened that time. That period is like the body suddenly disappeared. Mm. Why? Is it because VIP were, 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 were going by road? Mm -hmm. no, now, that's a question for every reasonable person to ask. Now you said, how am I feeling? My sister, I am saddened. I wept when I went to Kajiri. I wept because that kid, the emir that was with he is 80 something years old. I know him. I know him as far back as 1992. 92. When I was the local government chairman in Tukuri, he was one of the district heads. That was as far back as 1997. So he's a father to me. And I know how fragile the first situation was at that time the victim. I can only pray. Because I know you will not get his medication in the forest. He had a grandson who was just a year old. I'm a parent. You think I have peace? Hmm. Let me go If I have peace, then I'm not human. Yeah. I remember when there was I'm gone every day. In fact, the trauma I suffered the day the better that these students were taken. A woman called me as early as 8 a.m. I didn't have her number. And the person she asked me, Honorable, so we have voted you for our children to be killed, to be kidnapped. If you were my shoe, what answer will you give her? Let me go on a quick break, sir. When I come back, we'll continue this conversation with you. Stay with us. We'll be right Thank back. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have Honorable Yakubu Bade with us, representing uh, Chikun Kajiru Federal Constituency of Kaduna State. Honorable. We, uh, we obviously are quite concerned, just as you are, of what the state of happening is. Even the PDP said that there should be a state of emergency. People are worried that the governor um, seems somewhat helpless. I mean, what solutions do you think we can, we can prefer here? I mean, someone is saying that, can we arm vigilante groups across the state? We don't, have, we, don't, we don't have enough security operatives to deploy to that state. But can we engage members of the community and, and arm them? You know, to have them across the state because your state is obvious, your state and constituency is obviously bed. a huge attraction to these people. Mm. What suggestions are you are you preferring to the governor at this time? Yes, I uh, to the government. Let me rather say mm. not to the governor because you, I understand the frustration of the governor because, like we always say, the governor has assumed to be the chief security officers of their state, but the CP does not take instruction directly. From the governor, he waits on the IGP, that is the general of the police. Likewise, the commanding officers who are in various commissions in Kaduna, they went for their GOC to give instruction, and the GOC takes instruction 
from the team of army staff. Likewise, with the other services, army, I mean, army, air force, and navy. Now, that as it may, you agree with me that the governor would not have it the way they really want because they don't have absolute control over this military establishment. So that makes the issue of vigilante and police, state policing very, very important. Because whatever and however we look at it, these vigilante are in the community. They know the terrain better than any police is put from any place. So for me, it's one of the ways to go. Let me follow up. Number sir, two, sir, and sir, I, I sir, let me pause you for a second. You're a member of the National Assembly. We keep hearing it as past second reading. That say, what is taking so long for this to be passed? This issue of state police now, or, or um, um, yeah, what's the, delay? What, what's the delay? No, I think we don't have a, you know, we don't have a problem. We are all in the unanimous now in having yeah, state police. Yes. Because the issue here, the issue here, if you want to pass a law, you must have the consent of the people who want to implement it. Before now, you know there was this uh, discarded cause by the governor, whether to have the police or not. So whatever law we pass, we must look at the implementation, the uh, flexibility of implementing it. So now that the governor, I think, I think they have now, they are now unanimous in having the police. And I think Mr. President also has been the light that we should have it. So for that, we don't have a problem. I think it will be passed very soon. Hey, now, Yes, we don't have a problem because the governors that will implement it are willing to do so. And the state sounds of assembly are willing to fund the police of each state. Okay. Now, one of the reasons, one of the solutions which I think we need to do to have is that if we cannot prevent the kidnapping of our children or our people, can we make kidnapping business unattractive? And how do we do that? Can we make sure that they are not able to spend that money? Okay, they start away with hundreds of millions, 50 million. I ask this simple question. When have you ever caught a bandit with even 5 million naira? It means like uh, my sister asked uh, previously. Follow the money, yeah. The money goes back to the town. So they have collaborators among us, politicians, mm. and even the military. Mm. That is all the truth. So the commander-in-chief must use all resources available to him to fish out these collaborators. It's the bandit who is in the in, in, who is in drinking dirty water, sleeping in a shattered uh, environment, what will he buy with $10 million? So who does he take it to? I have had incidences where a bandit will tell you that he was only paid uh, maybe uh, $50,000 or $20,000 for kidnapping people. So why are these people on Tetris not touching why can't they be fished out? Are we really serious? Okay, if we lack the resources to fish them out, let's ask for foreign assistance. Right. Okay, okay. let me... Let a, me... White, a, a, a white man, a, an American was kidnapped. One, one life. Through intelligence, they were able to take him. Mm -hmm. They rescued him from the hand of the bandits. Now, so it, now. Don't we share intelligence with the international community? The chief security officer of the state does not call the shot when it comes to security in the state. It's still the president yeah. that has to call the shot. So we have, like I asked earlier, provisions that we must resort to when the situation gets out of hand like it is now. We have 200 yeah. and something children would not release. And now they picked up an enemy and his entire family that you know is even closer to you. Don't you think now we should have the military take over Kaduna State, restore peace before we go back to democracy in that state under Section 305 of our constitution? Anyway, I, I will call for security to take over, but I will call for more deployment of security personnel to our... Uh, Where are they going to find that their friends? That doesn't work, sir. Yes. That, that hasn't anyway, worked so uh, far, sir. So I feel like we need to call a spade a spade. That if we really, if we've said that the governor cannot fully secure the people because he is not in charge of the security apparatus, why, does, why don't we have a set of emergency so that we can know who we are holding accountable. Because if we call governor, governor will say, eh, CP does not report to me. Eh, the, 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 the military does not report to me. So in between all of that cracks, lives are being lost, sir. Schools are shutting down. Lives are being so lost. Let us have a state of emergency chaos. and have the military fully take over. And let's see who we will blame. And we can directly blame the military for not handling issues over there. Yeah, anyway, it's the call some people will make, but personally, 
I, 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 I'm a Democrat. I believe in the, having a constitutionally imposed uh, um, governance. And uh, if we have to go by means of uh, emergency, I, anyway, I don't have all the knowledge at my disposal to know how well the military can perform under right. that situation, which right. they are not doing now. So all right. that's where I have a problem. Go ahead, because if they have the, the way of how to do it, what is hindering them now? Because the governor and we here, city, we want to do everything possible to make sure that our children are rescued. So what's happening that they cannot do it now? Why? Well, well, they don't have to keep over right. the government. Let me get a few more questions in for you, sir. Thanks. Honorable Badi. Um, so, yes. you know, um, a lot of people have been speaking about the insecurity in Kaduna State and the Middle Belt, Belt Forum had spoken, expressed concern. And one of the things they highlighted is the fact that the kidnappers are infuriated with the governor's utterances. And that is why they are trying to make that place a really hot bed to get him to pay the ransom he's saying he's not paying. What do you think about it? Could it be because he's speaking up and saying yeah, no to me, ransom payments? My sister, for me, for me, the governor, Erufai, needs all the help because he's bold enough to take him in their presence. If the day governors will look weak, a weakling before this bandit, we are all done. Yeah. Do we expect Mr. Governor to come out and say, oh, um, I'm going to pay ransom to the bandit? Oh, then there's no governor. Somebody must be able to speak the truth. What we need to do is to prevent it happening. That's just it. But right. pay ransom for me, no. Okay. But let's all know that these parents are paying ransom to them for no fault of theirs. I have even, I can say it categorically, I've helped a lot of people to pay ransom. So I feel the pain. Wow. I feel the pain. Right. Let me go I cannot afford to see anybody that die. If I have billions of naira, I want to help. But again, the flip side of it is Will you not know, know? Will you now not be empowering the band the more? Right. All right okay, of me... recent, in Nubi, they were able to go with armor personnel carrier and pro, uh, rocket propellant grenade. That is very dangerous. Let, let me go on a quick break again. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us, we do have Honorable Yakubu Bade with us. Right, so before the break, um, we'll talk, we had a question. Go ahead, please. Sir, so um, I... Hello, sir, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you very well. Okay, so I, I listen to a lot of our leaders based on this show. We ask questions, and there's this sense of helplessness, sense of, I wish, I, I want to do more. I really want to do more. And I've usually just challenge that before you go into political office, you know that there are problems, like you're supposed to come with solutions. And then we have many smart um, Nigerians that you can work with to help you come up with um, a domestic solution, solution for the problems you're facing. What are the people, who are the people you've consulted within your community? Um, how has your investigation within the community, what results have you gotten? What solutions have they given you on how to better secure themselves? Um, thank you. Uh, like I always say, um, the security of the people, number one, is like joint security because they have a responsibility for themselves. But let me tell you, with time, people get overwhelmed. I remember before, uh, when this issue of insecurity started, it started like uh, it was cattle rustling. And uh, when the people realized that cattle rustling, oh, who are not bringing enough money, or the countries are no longer available, and because they have become used to used, used to stolen money, they now went into the kidnapping of people. Now, I will tell you, with all sincerity, some people who are very vulnerable within the communities have also joined them. Mm. That's just the truth, and that's a very unfortunate incident. 
I will tell you an incident where a, a young man within the community connived with the bandit to come and kidnap the person who sells, who sold the property. And he even told the kidnappers how much he sold the property. And they kidnapped him and they asked him exactly that amount that he, he, he got by selling that property. Wow. Now, you see, this is a very dangerous trend. Because if we have insiders who are conniving with them, then I think solution is far we, we We are not very close to it. That as it may, like I always say, the life, the world today works on intelligence. It works with technology. There's no individual that should be more powerful than a state or a country. No group of individuals. Except if we are treating this bandit with no sense. If, like, this, like I said now, like I, earlier I, I said in different uh, fora, these children that were kidnapped, he, from Kalapanzi Barak to where the children were, without traffic, maximum is 15 minutes for the military to get there. Now, I've asked the military, and they will tell you that if they, if they attack those students, those children will be killed. That's very true. Nobody would like his child to be killed. But is that attacking? Is it the only solution? Can we demobilize all of them using technology? Then we go pick them up. Demobilize the, the people that can now demobilize the adopters, uh, the people that adopted the demand. Honorable Bobby. They all go to sleep. Then you pick them up. Right. Why is it not happening? Honorable Bobby, let me let me. Let me express my confusion and frustration because I get the fact that many of our leaders seem helpless. I, I mean, understandably so. Ah. However, you know, in other times when things like this happen, we see um, a united um, parliament, or I would say maybe the lawmaking arm, where they take the decision, for, they, take, they, they, they take the, the bull by the horn, which is one of, one of which is, um, some, some, will, some will even consider impeachment. Mm. Some will consider, we are told for the service chiefs, they, they did that. We give, did we give them time? Have we reviewed what they've done so far? The right. point is that you are our representation. Exactly. Those people I see in those pictures, they are trusting and believing that you yes. are fighting for them. for them. And by so doing, it's either we're saying, you know what, this administration and this presidency is not doing what we want them to do. What um, tools you have at your disposal as a lawmaker? And is there a disunity or unity between those of you and your, your colleagues to ensure that, listen, if they cannot fix it on the lower level, from the top we can fix this problem. We, we, I mean, is there something from you that I can do from the, from the National Assembly level? Because your answer sounds like you're like us, citizens, mm. but you are more powerful than no. us, you're a representative. Mm. I, I, my sister, let me be very, very honest with you. I think, um, I always say I wish somebody would love this country. Mm. People in leadership, I don't want to exonerate myself, but do we have sincerity in governing this country? Mm. Do we really have? Simple things like religion, simple things like ethnicity will make some will make some of us to be not not to be loyal to the country. Not be taught to be patriotic to the country. I will tell you, I've seen frustration among my peers where logic overtakes the reasoning. Simple thing that we can be united. Somebody will tell you, no, Mr. President is from my religion, Mr. President is from my section, or no, he's from my party. I think it's very unfortunate. And I'll tell you, I personally feel that frustration. Because if you don't have unanimity in taking action, then there can be no solution. We'll be divided. I need to I, I relate well, let me put it this way. I relate well with my governor. I talk to him because he is my governor. We are not from the same party. But I give him suggestions that I know will help keep Kaduna State in peace. The little knowledge I have. But in different uh, stratum of leadership, you see that we have people who will tell you that, no, he's my tribe. 
Right. So, anything you Let me take a few correct. comments on our uh, so, online is? messages. Go ahead, um, Bidima. Go ahead, please. I just lost my message. Oh, lost okay, before, yeah. okay, before you yeah, do that, I wanted to ask you, um, Honorable Badi, um, aside from yeah. the fact that um, students are being abducted almost on a daily in uh, Kaduna State, the farmers as well are not able to go to the farm. And the fear is farming is very, you know, close. It is not happening right now in Kaduna. Is there anything you're doing, the National Assembly is doing about um, how they can protect the farmer so that at least we don't jump from one problem to another. <laughs> we are not rubbing, we are not rubbing, uh, um, uh, we are not, um, we, 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 we are not cutting the problem from the, uh, from the roots. Rather, we are cutting from the bud. That's just it. I, I put it this way. When we say, okay, every day we pass motion, we say, give palliative, give food to them. I mean, have we solved the problem? We haven't. But of course, Temporarily, somebody who is out of his house, he has been displaced, he has no home, he has no food, he has no clothes. The first thing you want to do for him is to give him food. Mm. And these are the palliatives we are given, which are not deep-rooted solutions at all. So, for me, like I keep on saying, we are not truthful to ourselves, mm. even in leadership, wow. to make sure that our country... So, All right, let me take like a Like I told you, I have different views about, I have listened to people, and most of the time, we allow partisans, party difference, to overtake national interest, or religious interest to overtake national interest, or ethnic interest to overtake national interest. Is that how we are going to live? Let me take a few it's comments from you. About issues in Kaduna, our leaders, Priorities are still being misplaced. In this same Kaduna, I have seen heavy weapons used in escorting Mopo commandants and some politicians in the state with men that are supposed to secure citizens of the state. Professor Sakibuewa said this did not so backward to the extent that electronic transmission of votes would work. Ali Ndume's um, argument is not tenable. Anita Odon says, declare a state of emergency. That seems to be the best solution for now, talking about Kaduna. And Baya Adenegu says, if the North is not ready, Regions that are ready should be allowed to move on. The North may join in electronic transmissions whenever they are ready. It is unfair to hold developments of others because one is not ready. All right, we have to wrap up with you, sir, because, um, I mean, I must acknowledge that we've had a lot of lawmakers come on our show, but you have been one of the most sincere mm -hmm. that we've spoken to in a very long time. And I can, we can feel the pulse of your frustration. Mm -hmm. However, unfortunately... It's not enough because the people would always say <laughs> you are there because we voted you in. So um, as we wrap up with you, what is that thing you'd like us to know as a lawmaker that is being done, especially because the Kajuru local government, to ensure to restore safety back to those people? I, I moved a motion last week about the issue of these children that were adopted. And of course, I just call on the government to help our people. Deployment of more security partners. Despite the fact I know that commanders in the various arm of uh, the security agencies have told me that they are on demand. But I, that's all I need to do. But again, I will tell you that the vigilante in my area are doing well. The only problem they have is to have weapons, a minimal amount of weapons, the weapons that they can use. And I think that has to do with the state law. Yeah, and uh, I'm, push, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with my House of Assembly members that if the governor comes up with something like that, I think some minimal amount of equipment or arms should be given to this vigilante. I think that is where we can start from. Then one more thing, sir. Sheikh Gumi seems to have an inroad to these bandits. I mean, he talks to them. They seem to um, see him as a godfather to who, who, tell, who they tell all their issues. They need, they need um, the government to talk to them on issues of health, you know, stuff like that. Have you engaged Sheikh Gumi? Maybe he can speak to the bandits, especially those, in the, um, the, um, um, those, are those ones who are the coming, coming to the Kajuri um, local government area. I'm telling you, some of our, some of the parents are doing that, and he has been up and doing about how to go about releasing them. The only problem I have with Sheikh Gumi's approach mm -hmm. is when he said that they should be given money. I, I take exception at that. It's only out of frustration that I will help a parent to, to, to rescue his or her child from the hands of the adopters. 
if that was frustration because instead of a life to be lost, I would rather pay and let rescue their life. But that has it may I will continue to say, if I am a governor today and, and truly Chief Gumi has an ill route to this head of this bandit, there is nothing wrong in engaging them and making sure that their grievances are listened to as long as it does not compromise the sovereignty of Nigeria. Why won't we do it? That is it. Thank you very if, much. If, if, if their demand are things that the government can do, why not? We should. Thank you very much, Honorable Yakub. I think I'll let you go at this point. Thank you very much for joining us Thank this you. morning. It was a pleasure having Thank you and you hearing your thoughts on this issue. Um, so, we're coming back to the ladies now. Um, let me, I'd like to take some messages on YouTube and um, other Facebook. Because, as I said, just like Tokwe said earlier, that some of our leaders sound just as frustrated as we are. Ah, yes, and we so. felt that, okay, they have the solution, or maybe they don't, like, they're, not, they're just not implementing the ideas. Not but it seems that there's no, they're not totally united in this thing. They, are, so, they have various factions who have different loyalties and... Um, there's a um, message that captures that. Onye Maria Azonta said, um, since our representative came to dish out advice, I believe our representative should be talk, uh, talk, talking to the wrong people. He should be talking to his colleagues, not us. And I think that this is, I, I, I sort of felt this way in the beginning because I, I was like, I had to ask him that. But you are, you are in the position of, you are in the well, hallowed one, chamber. Doctor, let me, let's be fair. Yes. He's one so person. He There's only so much you can do as a You as cannot a do anything yeah. as one, one person. person. Exactly. Yes. You need to work together. Yes. And I don't yeah. know why they have, have the house. house. So, the, 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 uh, the saying of the prophet, I don't want to, Salah Salam says, if you see a bad thing, you change it by your hand. That is, you fight it. If you cannot, you speak against it. If you cannot, just hate it alone in your heart. So he's at that point. That's the weakest link. Yeah. Where you just hate it, but you There's can't do anything. Can yeah. do, yeah. But I think as a lawmaker, the least you can do is speak against it. Not oh, like Jibril did no the last matter, time. They go, no, no, matter matter where, where, <laughs> no matter where you're afraid. Uh, well, yes, I'm it's saying. better to be heard that you spoke against it. Uh, yeah. Promise Nation says, the electronic voting won't work. The card reader technology is yet to work normal. Many were unable to get their card re read by the card reader. Definitely, we are still far from using technology like electronic voting. So we went to sleep after the last elections. Yeah. We went to sleep. We went to sleep. So we said it here. We said it here. That a few uh, years to a few months to we still come to back and still navigate. Let me take this call from Yakub. Yakub, are you there? I'm there. Well, You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you very much. And every man to you on this video. Mm -hmm. But I, know, I totally agree with you. Uh, this uh, honorable that you just spoke to now is, is, is the best sincere person that this studio have ever spoken to in recent times. Uh, listen to him, you know this man says the truth, nothing but the truth. And then uh, about declaring of state of emergency in Kaduna State, I totally disagree with that for reason. The reason being that if you declare state of emergency in that very particular state, and then the, the military take over, Moraya, I can tell you if that place is so big for bandits, these people will move to another state. Are you going to declare state of emergency in another state? So you continue to declare state of emergency because these guys are very stupid and wicked. When the heat is so big there, they will move from state to another state. So, and then the honorable say something that is very, very so jammed, that this vigilante that you, you don't give weapon and then you tell them to protect the, the, the villagers. Ah, they going to protect just like uh, 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 the, the Southwest uh, uh, Amoteku. That they, just, they, they are not giving them weapons. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this, please do this for us. Send one of your crew to the, to the OPC that got this man arrested in Gaza last time. If this guy tells you what they face in, the, in, the, in, uh, in prison, Moraya will know that we are in soup, in, 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 this, in this soup. Because this guy faced a lot of things for arresting that, that bandit that time. And then they got them arrested, and then they, they, they forget them in the prison. And then they beat them there. I listened to them on social media. I said, this country, wow. Even the, even the DPO, in those various states, they lie with this kind of bandit, and then they get their own share. That is the truth. If you get those uh, OPC people, Moraya, you will know what I'm talking about. Good morning. Thank, Thank you very much, Jacob. Comments on social media? Yeah. So I did that one, I did for you, says, I guess DSS jurisdiction doesn't cover Kaduna and other states where bandits are doing what they do. Yeah, in Dunami Church. Uh, Halimat <laughs> Ab <laughs> Abdaziz says, the government has failed us woefully. Let's join hands to protect our lives and properties. Mm -hmm. Now, with Arrow, 
the government will always come up with one excuse or another. Olua Femi Falaye says, think of its disadvantage of using guns by all humans. It has more harm than good, and let the government stand and do the needful with immediate effect. Andrew says, if the Nigerian government is wise, they need to bring in a Syrian, Liberian, and a Sierra Leonean to show or tell them what happened to their nation. Wait, wait, I don't think he's saying that. I mean, yes, he's suggesting for them to legalize arms. It's all out of frustration. Yeah. Nobody really wants every citizen holding arms. But no, 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 when no, he's no. talking okay. to his citizens, when they're saying, listen, if these boys that came here, they're about 60, if we had guns, we would have defended ourselves. So yeah. he's a lawmaker speaking the voices of his people. But at the same time, we also need to take that in and see what else can we do to solve the problem. Because you can't arm citizens. It's that, that's even counterproductive. Like, we don't want this democracy. Honestly. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. We, so can we really be democratic? And I think we are, we are putting the cart before the, the horse. The that all of us are shouting that is not good. Provided ways out of all this situation. Whenever it's necessary, we now start to play politics. We have to leave this thing called politics. People are dying every day. We can't be using sentiment but to address Nima, it. I have said it before. We all here talk about Singapore, Singapore. Singapore was a dictator. Yu was a dictator. So sometimes we, we talk of democracy. democracy but at this, at this point us. right now, we don't need a democracy. We don't need a democracy. Yes. Somebody had to, to like come over with the iron hand. Sort of like, yeah. So you know what, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. At some point, because at this, we, we are trying to be democratic. Uh, you know, even our president was frustrated when he came. He said when he was a military, that certain things he have to do, follow due process. That he mm. wished he would just had the declaration saying, do this and do that. Yeah, but now, that. you have to go through the, the, the due process. Me, my dad. Uh, so <laughs> I, I just feel that, um, you know, sometimes when you get really frustrated, you want the gun to be legalized. But I do not think, like he said, there are certain things that need to be put in place before right. that happens. And I do not think that it's every Nigerian that will be licensed to hold a gun. If you meet certain criteria, they can give you that. If you do anything wrong with the gun to kill somebody, right. you can be jailed for right. it. Right. But I think we need to start looking at that sometimes. Yeah. Because these people who they are coming, run. they are coming with their AK-47 and machines. Yeah. Yeah. And they are meeting vigilantes who have nothing. nothing. Is it Aro you want to use to kill yeah. 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 somebody with AK-47? We have to run, unfortunately. But thank you very much, ladies. We have to wrap up on this right now. We hope you learned a few things as we have. Mm. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.